from Huey Lewis, I Want a New Drug. Really? Yeah. Huey I'm Lewis that came out with the song, I Want a New Drug, right? And then they kind of stole the beat, if you will. And it was one of the first lawsuits regarding song stealing. Copyright, song yeah. stealing. Yeah, that's interesting. So Good, the reason we're playing that. the Ghostbuster thing is because, Bonte, what are you wearing? How would you even, what is that? So this is this next level European swag right here. I know. So it looks Paris like, to Saint me, Germain. it's so like I'm, a light, is it khaki or gray? It's like khaki... It looks like you're wearing the Ghostbuster jumpsuit. Listen, listen, the pockets are next level. They are sick. It's like Jordan. It's Jordan brand. So I bought this out of the Paris Saint Germain team store. Oh, soccer team. And I was like, Anna, what do you think? She goes, That is fire. Get that. Yeah, it has like a a little suit, right? Yeah, it has like a little stand up. If you're on YouTube right now, you can see it. It's got pockets. Um, and it's it's buttoned down, and it's a double. Oh yeah, it says Paris on it, but it's like khaki gray, and it's I mean it's a fly outfit. Think top bottoms, I mean, you know. And, button and then you get the shoes, you get the dunks. Yeah, right? if Let's you're see. on YouTube, you can see it. Comment see, now. See that? That's see interesting. That? Yeah, you do have the dunks, yeah, and those yeah. have like a pocket on the yeah. shoes. Oh yeah, wow, what are you wear, putting you in the pocket? Swag. Yeah, I didn't. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> a little stowaway. <laughs> yeah. Ghost. <Stowaway>. Ghost. <laughs> so I think you look like Peter Venkman. So I've got the Star Trek outfit. Do you know with who the Peter Venkman is? No, I don't. Um, Peter Venkman is Bill Murray's character in Ghostbusters. Oh, I just say Bill Murray then. But he's Peter Venkman. Okay. He's one of the greatest characters in cinematic movie history. That movie still gets a lot of love. The Ghostbusters station wagon was pretty cool. Do you know it's the first movie I memorized word for word? Is it really? I was like four or five years old. Yeah. I remember the Ghostbusters cartoon. Oh, it was great. Remember that? Yeah. Remember Steven, that? there's a Slimer joke in here somewhere. Get in there. Uh, I got nothing for you. I'm trying to play. <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 I got nothing for you. Did you see right. Afterlife, though? The new I, Ghostbusters? I cried at the end. Not too bad. I cried at really? the end. Really? Yeah, I, I never I didn't I cried even watch it. Well, I cried at the end because Egon meant a lot to a lot of people. He watch. passed away. <laughs> and it's it's an era of Saturday Night Live that's, you know, obviously got to the to the big screen and whatnot. So my favorite part of Ghostbusters, as we're about to lead in Laura Britt here, is Janine, when she's answering the phone, Ghostbusters, what do you want? It's hey. just, I love that about New York. So the pockets on the pants, people are asking about the pockets. How do I put my hands in the pockets? Even the Hegan looked at me as like, what is that thing? What is that thing? Got to be a special breed to rock something like this. They say you it's got to like be on 10. We got one! Yes! <laughs> Janine! Hill looks like a 2022 maintenance man from France. Oh. It's not bad. So what is the brand? Is the brand Jordan or is it co-branded? Yeah, no, it's Jordan. So they're branded by Qatar Airlines and Jordan. Is it Qatar This is Brandon. Uh, I don't know. I've heard it pronounced both ways. Qatar, right? It's Qatar. I hope I got there. It's Qatar Airlines. Okay. Not Cater, right? That's where the whole World Cup is this year. uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Qatar Airlines sponsors, they own PSG, and then Jordan sponsors the jerseys as well. So this is all Jordan. So are we outraged at Jordan? For sponsoring up with the Saudis, not going to go there. Well, aren't, aren't they part owners of that? Well, of that Jordan, team? maybe Jordan was there first with PSG. Yeah, uh, we do selective I mean, outreach. Did, uh, did so Qatar, many Fortune yeah, 500 companies yeah, are, yeah, are yeah, in yeah. bed with the Saudis? No it's doubt, ridiculous. No doubt. No doubt about that. No doubt. But this is this is fire. By the way, the poll. Yeah. Our poll question today is: This market a Super Bowl or bus sports market? Is the Bay a championship or bus sports market? 285 votes. Mm. 60, 69% says yes. Whoa. It is a championship or bus market. I think that that's disproportionate. I don't know if that represents the entire fan base because the Twitter oh, audience is a small drop in the bucket. Nice. There it is. Laura Britt, she joins us. We know, we love Laura. She's the queen of the morning roast. She's a roaster. The roasters love her. She's doing a great job on Giants pre and post game. I don't know how she's surviving during the season. I can't survive watching the damn game for three hours. She's got to do the pre and the post and dress it all up. Laura, long time no talk. Good to hear from Some you. Some of my, my favorite radio guys. It's great to be back with you two. But you know who needs some roasting? You two. Uh-oh. Oh, whoa, whoa. You two need some uh, roasting. Uh, uh, why? Oh, why? Why are you coming at us, Laura? Okay, first off, where did you get this uh, this outfit that you have on? Oh, is out. this a is this a European outfit? Yeah, I got this out in Paris, Laura. <laughs> out in Paris. Paris, what the Paris. hell is Paris? Well, remember Kanye West on Punked when they punked him? He was shooting a video and he's like, "I gotta go to Paris. I gotta go to Paris." I think they were like lying about his flight or something. Like, oh, oh we can't get the plane to work, and oh. he was like, "I gotta go to Paris." Oh, so Paris, aka Paris. Okay, 
Yeah. So, so yes, this is from the European extravaganza. <laughs> <laughs> and you come back, and you're all fancy now? I feel like I, you think you know somebody. I, I mean, Bougie Bonte has been making an appearance since the Warrior season. Laura, where you been at? You think you know somebody. <laughs> and then, so I was like, all right, so Bonte's, you know, he's gone. He's fancy now, mm-hmm. you know, off the rails. But then I see Joe Shasky sitting in the best seats possible at the latest Giants game. And I was like, who are these guys? Well, Laura, let me tell you about Joe Shasky. I've watched this ego grow Time for about six years now. Give me a 20. I mean, I mean, this guy, his ego, Laura, I mean, it might as well just be the butcher shop. It might as well be. I don't know who he I've gotten back from Europe, and I don't even know who he is anymore, Laura. I'll so tell you who I am. This is the guy who's changed. Okay, first off, I got really great tickets from Lucas Alexander because I essentially raised him as my own child, even though we're only about, I don't know, nine or ten years apart. And my wife and him have become very close friends because of all of the meals and all of the games and all of the things that I've done for him over the years. And he goes, you got to sit in these seats. It's one of his good friends' seats. And they are the most incredible seats I've ever seen sat at any sporting event in my life second row behind home plate they were incredible laura so of course i had to put a picture out there on twitter of, of course of course so i just feel like we need to bring you guys back down to reality I, well so bring him you're back. normally doing the roasting i felt like the table like needed to be turned this no, 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 laura listen this guy I'll has gone it. to every single training camp practice i took him to one practice last year this guy is mr train he's telling me where the facility is now i mean this guy's <laughs> changed oh nick bolsa this and you know john lynch that and you know i was talking to jed york and parag Marate about contracts i mean this guy is on another level right now laura so roast Pick the roasting. Right, roast Shasky no, over here. I don't want to start See, you're, there. Try, you're trying to deflect, Bobby. I am. Thank you. That's what you're doing. I, I, I mean, that's, I'm, I'm, yeah. Laura, Laura, I want to ask you a question about Gabe sorry, Kapler. You, you've been covering this team now for multiple years. You've seen every step of the Gabe Kapler thing. You're doing the post and the pregame, uh, and I'm, I'm enjoying all the coverage that you guys are doing, you and Carlos and whoever's on there, whether it's Sean or, or Randy. Um, I felt like Kapler – was feeling the heat a little the other day when they were talking to him in the scrum and you had some of the B writers, Alex Pavlovich being one of them, asking him about pinch runners, asking about Camilo Duval. It's just my sense from hearing it back a couple times, he felt like a guy who might be feeling internal pressure. I, I don't know that to be to be true. It's just it was odd how defensive he was. I so I don't think that that's unique to that situation after after being, you know, covering the team closely and and being in a lot of those you know listening to a lot of those pressers all the time. Um it's I, I don't feel that that's going on. I don't I don't think it's internal pressure that he's getting at all. It might be pressure that he's putting on himself. Hmm. Um and and hindsight's always 2020. That's what we talked about that night. Yeah, when it doesn't work out, you can go back and say, "Yeah, you should have brought in Camilo Duval. He's throw in 170 miles an hour, <laughs> bring him in. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I do feel like in that instance he did get defensive, but sometimes I've gotten that this this season. Sometimes that's huh. how, how it is. And it's probably just you're doing this for 162 games, and at times, yeah, you're, if I'm him, I'm mad at myself in that moment. And so then you've got to get asked about it and, yeah, it's part of the gig. It's part of the job. But yeah. I didn't get. I don't get the sense that it's internal pressure going on. I think it's just we really needed to win that game, and maybe he was thinking, "Yeah, I guess I should have done that." But he's not probably going to admit that. Yeah, no doubt. Laura Britt, NBC Sports Bay Area on the morning roast, the queen of the roast, of course. Laura, what about Brandon Belt? This feels like a sad end to his tenure as a Giant. He's had a very good Giants career. The bunt yesterday. First, let's get your thoughts on the bunt. Bottom of the seventh inning, two strikes, I runners mean, on second and third, and he fouls out. You heard the call from Kuki Kite. They were it sounded like they were befuddled. What was your thoughts when you see Brandon Bell lay down that butt with two strikes? Well, I think Zach Gallen kind of uh, encapsulated how everyone felt about it. He was walking off the mound laughing. <laughs> like confused? Like it's just straight confusion. So I think a lot of people were confused. We've seen seen bits and pieces of that, not just from him. I'm talking about bunting. The Giants mm-hmm. bunt more than any team yeah. in the major in the majors with their they've got more bunt hits than any team in the majors. So there are some moments, I guess, that when you have more bunt hits than any team in the majors that leave you kind of 
questioning. It was a it's weird. It was a weird decision. Well, you know, yeah. Laura, oh, my God, what's going on? Well, Laura, let me jump in there because, like, they bunted for a lot of hits. There's no doubt. But my God, can we sacrifice bunt in a certain situation? How many times has a guy gotten to second base? Longo, for example. And you're like, there's no way he's scoring on a normal base hit. Bump that, and there's no outs. Bump that guy over to third and give myself two opportunities to try to drive him in. Like, I get that they've bunted for a lot of hits. My question would be like, guys, why aren't we sacrificing? Like, I know, I sound like a relic from an older era, but we need runs. They, they can never get runs home. And first and second, no outs. They never move the runner over, and it it makes me want to rip my hair out. Yeah, it well, it is really frustrating. That's one thing that's been so deflating, and I think on a lot of their losing streak after the All Star break, and even sometimes before that, how many times did they have bases loaded, no out, and got not one run, <sighs> zero runs? Oh. Too many to count. Too many to season. Talk about frustration. That'll make you go crazy. So, and I, I imagine if the fans are feeling like, like that, if people watching the game are feeling like that, how much more deflating is it for the team when you're in the midst of that? And then you're playing bad teams and this is happening. I mean, that's, I think that's the biggest concern for me. You know, earlier in the season, you bring up, oh, they're playing a sub-500 team. You'll usually get, well, it's baseball. It's 162 games. You get, but when you're going five and seven against the Diamondbacks and the Diamondbacks are 55 and 63, and that's after they've, just beat you twice. That's a problem. Mm. And when you've you've got a season where you're going 19 and 29 against NL West opponent, it's mm-hmm. yeah, it's going to be hard to make the postseason like that. Right. And when you're you're performing at a higher, I get the Dodgers, I get the Padres. Although the Padres have been struggling, they almost got swept by the Marlins. Yeah, lost to the Nats last um, night. Yeah, that's. I mean, how much of it? You know what I was thinking the post game show the other day. We didn't get the chance to talk about this, but imagine if you're a Padres fan ahead of the deadline. You know, you get Juan Soto, your team's stacking up, and then you can't win a game. It's like we have the best lineup. We can't win it. Well, outside of the Dodgers, we can't win a game. <laughs> right. So they, I think that's really frustrating going all in, and then you can't right. win. And now with Tatis Jr. You know, being suspended, and they're not getting him back. That light at the end of the tunnel is, is now, you know, disappeared. But anyway, back to the Giants. Let's let's spin it positively. They've got a favorable upcoming schedule. They're about to go to Colorado. You've got three games against a fifty-one and sixty-nine team. You've got two games against the Tigers, a forty-five and seventy-five team. Make those games count. Yeah, you have to make those games count. And mm. yeah, you might say, okay, they can't win every game. No, they can't win every game for the rest of the season. No one's saying that. You have to take advantage of opportunities when you're playing mm. sub-500 teams when there are 44 games remaining in the season. Yeah. That, that has to be the case. When, you've, when you're hoping now, because you're six games back of the Padres for the first, third wild card spot, although now that the Phillies are struggling a little bit, it is going to yeah. be a battle between the Phillies, the Padres, and the Brewers and the Giants to get those last two spots. It's, I don't think it's totally out of reach, but the best scenario is when you play – the Padres head to head, and you can right. make up ground. Well, they only face them six more times this mm-hmm. season, and they have the Phillies three times as well. Laura, Phillies three times on the first week of September, I believe. Laura Britt here on the morning roast on ninety five seven. The game. Where do you stand with Joey Bart? Do you believe he should be moved up in the lineup? I, don't, you know, I, I know that there's a lot that goes into to making the lineups, and a lot of it is matchup based, and a lot of it is you know analytics that are far over my head. <laughs> so. You know, I don't want to sit here and pretend like I'm smarter than the Giants or I'm smarter than Gabe Kapler and should be able to move players in their lineup better than they can. So I'll put that out there. But when a guy's hot, like, yeah, and he's, and it's not one game. This is not one week. This is now, you know, multiple weeks in a row where we've been able to see him come back to the majors. And this is the, one of the best stories, I think, of the Giants for the second half of the season, despite the struggles that they've had. This doesn't always work out. You don't send a guy down to AAA for a few weeks, and then all of a sudden his swing is fine. And not just fine, but great. So I think that that's a really big positive, mm. not just for Joey Bart, for the Giants, but also for the future with, with Joey Bart, knowing that mentally he's able to overcome the pressure that he was feeling, getting sent down to AAA, knowing that 
you know, my swing's not where it's... I mean, imagine all the internal pressure that he's putting on himself. Yeah. And then to be able to come back up to the majors and be as good as he's been. Yeah, I mean, you'd like to see him... You'd like to see him moved up a little bit, but... Uh, uh, I try not, I, I'm not going to pretend like I'm smarter than all the analytics people who went to God knows what university and have degrees <laughs> well, <laughs> that are uh, MIT. Are well, I Harvard, guess my yeah. pushback would be like, I mean, you started Xavier Machado and put him in like the sixth <laughs> hole, and the guy couldn't even play in the bigs. But that's neither here nor there. Look, I want to before you get on out of here. One of the, my favorite players for this year, obviously Logan Webb's one of them. Camillo, but Rodon. Rodon has been awesome this year. 55 more strikeouts than Webb. He's top in ERA, second in innings pitched. He's, uh, you know, most strikeouts. I mean, just all the metrics are telling you this guy's an absolute stud. On a team that has a horrible bullpen right now, he has been an innings eater and he goes deep into games. He's gone through seven innings eight times this year. Webb's done it seven. All the other Giants have done it four combined. So this guy is extremely valuable. I get disappointed when I hear Giants brass and people connected to the Giants saying, yeah, he's probably going to ask for too much. I don't care. They need to bring this guy back. He should be priority number one before we reach free agency. I know he's going to opt out. What are your thoughts on Rodon in bringing him back? I think you got to bring him back. I couldn't agree more. Uh, baseball players are expensive. Good baseball players Thank are you. expensive. When you have a guy like Carlos Rodon, he brings so much more than all the stats that you just right. mentioned. His fire that he brings is something that this team needs. They need a fiery guy in there, and he's done that. I get, I get sometimes the fire gets out of control in the dugout. But I, I, don't, I don't mind it. You know, one of my favorite moments this season was Gabe Kapler getting ejected. Yes. Yeah. Like, yes. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Show the fire! But, Laura, Let's let me ask you this. Team. Laura, let me ask you this real quick. One, do you believe Rodon's going to be back? And two, do you believe this regime is going to pay a guy like that when we see him just let Kevin Gosman walk? I think a lot of it also depends on other factors. Aaron Judge, where, what other guys are they signing? You know, They've got to manage their payroll however they do it, but I think you're also sending a message to your club when you don't pay guys that deliver consistently. Yeah. So, yeah. I would love to see Carlos Rodon back. There's no doubt in my mind that everyone there would love to see him back. Um, every, everyone within the Giants, I would imagine, would love to have Carlos Rodon back. And then you, you get to keep this momentum that you've built. That the starting rotation has been the best part of the Giants this season. By far. So why? Yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm with you. you know, yeah. with keep keep the, your co-aces. At least you have that consistency going into the 2023 season if you know you've got Rodon and you know you've got Logan Webb. But it's going to be tough. I mean, they're going to have to to match some high dollars. Yeah. No doubt about other that. Other teams offers. So <laughs> I, I, we're going to have to wait and see how that plays out. I, th- I would love to see him back. I think it would be a really smart decision. He's been so good. He's been so consistent. The question was health, and he's been healthy. Yeah. When on a roster that hasn't been, yeah. so I think that question can you know can is answered with Rodon. So I'd love to see him back. I just the Giants have got to make up some ground over this this road trip. Um, it was disappointing that they couldn't. I, I mean, I get maybe not sweep in a four game series, but at least take two out of I mean three out of four. Yeah, especially with, so now you're climbing an uphill battle. So especially with so Reb and Rodon on the back end, Laura. Who you won the first two games of the series. But Laura, before you get on out of here, I seen that you're you're raising a couple of little ball players. I seen them wearing the, the Giants gear. I coached junior Giants during the summer. It was awesome. Um my suggestion to you and your husband, get a little tee for the backyard and don't work on bunting. Teach those kids to <laughs> swing the damn <laughs> bats. Especially with two strikes. Uh, Especially with runners in scoring position. And two strikes. Oh, my God. You know what, you know what we're doing? We're, we're making him – well, we're not making him, but he doesn't know any better. He's uh, hitting lefty. Oh, good. We got that Ooh, going for us. I like that. Do what I Lil do. Will Clark. Will Bonte Sw- Hill. Switch hitter. Switch Lil hitter. Work on you know, my sides. husband went to Mississippi State, so we're already – Ooh. 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 Egg ball. Ooh. So Cowbells. It's in his blood. It's in his blood. Cowbells. I love it. Let's go, I love Laura it. Britt, the queen of the Don't roast. threaten me with a cowbell. I'll ring a cowbell on this show. No, I think mean, you should. We need it sometimes. We need it. Laura, you're the best. Yeah, you really are. I missed you're, your positivity. And, and you're doing a hell of a job on television. Your yeah, first you are. go around Absolutely. covering Giants baseball. That's not easy. And you're knocking it out the park. You're hitting a grand slam. 
Well, thanks, guys. I'll um, I'll elevate my wardrobe game to hang out with you guys next time. Right. Well, from Boilermaker on YouTube, Bonte solves math equations in the hallway <laughs> with a chalkboard during his shift. <laughs> They're coming at me. They're Matt roasting Damon. me. They're roasting me. There's some nice Roast jokes him. on here. Roasters, get these two. They need it. Yeah, they we do. It. No doubt You're about it. Laura, Laura, we'll see you soon. We'll see you soon.